Did you know that 80% of women experience symptoms associated with the menopause? Now these can be physical and emotional, they can have a really negative impact on people's lives. But there is treatment that's available to help alleviate these symptoms and the gold standard treatment is HRT or hormone replacement therapy. There are many different types of HRT but luckily we're joined by Dr Sam Wild today who's Bupa's Women's Health Clinical Lead and she's going to explain to us a little bit about what the different types are, what are the benefits and risks etc. So Sam, first of all, what exactly is HRT and what are the different types? So HRT, hormone replacement therapy, replaces the hormones that the ovaries are no longer making. So um, everybody has oestrogen as part of their HRT, but some women will also have progesterone as well. They need this if they have a uterus to prevent oestrogen from overstimulating the lining of the uterus, which can cause irregular bleeding and in some circumstances can lead to an endometrial cancer. It comes in lots of different forms, so um, you can have it in a tablet form, you can have it in patches, um, you can have it in gels and sprays as well. Um, so the doctor will work with you to decide what is best for you. Um, you can also get topical estrogen, which women may use for vaginal dryness. And again, that can come um, in pressories, it can come in gels, it can come in creams as well. So the type of HRT that's right for you will depend on your age, what stage of the menopause that you're at, mm -hmm. um, your sort of personal preference as well, and you know, whether you're still having periods and whether you need contraception. Okay. And then some women take testosterone as well, don't they? They do, yes. Yeah. So um, just as our estrogen levels drop, our testosterone levels drop as we go through the menopause too. So um, if you're suffering with low libido, that we might then add testosterone to your HRT preparation at a later date. Okay. So what, what exactly would you say are the main benefits of taking HRT? So obviously we hope that it's going to alleviate any of the symptoms that the woman may be suffering, but it does have some long-term benefits as well. So our risk of heart disease increases after the menopause, and HRT can prevent this risk um, and maybe even reduce the risk. Um, it also helps reduce the risk of developing osteoporosis as well, so it helps to keep our bones nice and strong. So it sounds like it's a really good thing and almost like everybody should take it, but with everything good comes potential side effects and risks, doesn't it? That's it. And um, your GP will discuss those side effects with you, what you might expect when you start taking your preparation, um, and also the risks that may be associated with it too. Um, so there are ways to get around some of these risks. Um, we do know that there can be an increased risk of blood clot if you take HRT orally. So we may decide that if you're at an increased risk of blood clot, we want to use it transdermally through the skin instead. Um, there can be an increased risk of breast cancer too. So your doctor will um, carefully go through your history with you and decide if it is appropriate for you to have HRT and what the best preparation for you would be. Are there any health conditions that women might have which mean they can't safely take HRT? So as I've just said, we can get around some of these conditions. So if somebody has high blood pressure, for example, that's when we would use a transdermal preparation or if somebody is at increased risk of a blood clot. Um, but there may be some conditions where you can't take um, HRT, such as a history of breast cancer. Not all women who have had breast cancer can have it. Um, so again, we would need to consider that, probably along with your consultant too, um, and decide what other treatments might be better for you. And I guess the final thing would be, um, if a woman is weighing up taking HRT, what would be your, I guess, summary advice for her in how best to make that decision? Um, it needs to be an informed decision, so I would always encourage a woman to read as much as possible, ask as many questions as possible. Um, it's got to be an individualised approach, so she has got to do what is right for her. So ask the questions, get all the information that you need, and then make the decision together with your doctor. Thank you, Sam. Thank you.